God, what the hell is that? Is this freaking Step Brothers? Dude! Dude! What are you doing? I've never heard of it. Me either. Let's talk about it. Okay. Howdy, everybody. We're Phantom Mayo. Well, Phantom Mayonnaise. The best condiment. <laughs> the, <laughs> not even arguably. No, yeah, not the not best even condiment ever. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to do a little uh, retrospective on the Red Hot Chili Peppers album One Hot Minute. Everybody's favorite Chili Peppers album. Everybody's favorite. Right? After maybe I'm with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And I think, you know, if you look back at most popular, highest sold, most awards won, yeah. those two are obviously Top above two. lesser albums like, say, Californication or... You know. That's the one? Well, I... Other people might mention that even being an album. For okay. me personally, it's... I only listen to One Hot Minute. Well, what's the other one? I think it's, like, The Other Way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is oh, the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, and, uh, this album comes from... Uh, well, actually, you don't want to know the suspects. Okay. The on All this right. One. This album was released on September 12th, 1995. All right. This album has kind of a tumultuous recording period where there was kind of, sort of some fallout with the band. I think most people know this album because, you know, John had left the band uh, they got a lot of popularity from Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and I think we all love that album. So once that popularity started to spring up, John wasn't really comfortable with that. Yeah. I think that, along with maybe some drug issues between him and Anthony and pretty much everybody in rock and roll at that time. Yeah, sex, so, drugs, rock and roll. Exactly. <laughs> the blood, 80s. blood, sugar, sex, drugs, rock and roll, magic. Coke and heroin. But, you know, what's funny about it is Anthony was, like, clean for a while. And he went and had a dental operation. Yeah. And then that's what made him fall back in. And you're just like, ah, fuck cavities, man. They I know. <laughs> gateway drug, man. Dental hygiene strikes again. <laughs> so, yeah, so pretty much they run into this issue where, hey, they just lost their guitar player, right? So Chad, the drummer, uh, Chad Smith, he mentions, hey, what about Dave Navarro? Jane's Addiction has recently broken up. He's working on a couple other projects, but... He's he should be our first choice, yeah. and indeed he was. They brought him in. They did a couple jam sessions in classic chili fashion. They saw whether they could jam with him good. They decided it was a good fit, and they decided, yeah. okay, let's go. Let's move forward with this. Let's make the next hit album. Yeah. Uh, and the process in doing that was anything but magic. Yep. Yep. Right. So uh -huh. there was a lot of creative issues with Dave where he didn't really agree with the jamming style of the creative process you know the chili pepper is very much they all get together they're jamming you know but he, if he's really grooving yeah. then you know okay well we'll keep that and that'll be a song yeah right or you know however that process might work whereas a lot of bands they might think okay well i'll come up with lyrics and then let's write a song to match the tone of these lyrics yeah whereas the chili peppers are very much like let's get a solid groove yeah and then anthony will just kind of rap over it and that's an album well and that's the the geniusness of the chili peppers has always been let's have flea drive the song uh -huh. the guitarist which is whoever has drugs in la and has a guitar <laughs> at the time yeah at the time <laughs> can <laughs> just hit some triplets not triplets uh, little triads up there and then anthony just just scats i'm pretty sure he just goes ding ding dong of california ding ding <laughs> dong i want to have sex with you and that is a chili pepper lyric right there not really but uh, you could find it yeah somewhere. exactly and that was always a chili pepper style and yeah. then they got dave and, and dave has even said he funk never spoke to him and chili peppers very i also funky. read that yeah and he was like i it doesn't speak to me but jamming with these guys is awesome. And so it, it definitely is that torn creative process. And Anthony had problems with, with drugs. And so Flea, for the first time, has lead vocals on a song. And yep. even helped write a few of them. He has backup on a couple songs, too, in this yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a completely different album. I, I like to think of this as if I had to, like, narrow down to someone. It's like 
Ross Geller and the Friends when he says we're on a break. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> I was with Rachel, everything's going great, a.k.a. Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Then they right. go on a little break. And he kind of gets back into the dating game, doesn't know what he's doing, and mm-hmm. he tries to fumble around a little bit. Right. And then it didn't really work out for him. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm on a break! We were on a break! <laughs> and that's how I like to think of this album. So, Dude, yeah, I mean, it's... There's just so many interesting stories behind this one where I feel like some of the other ones, while they're stories because it's like L.A. rock and roll, yep. this one, there's so many layers to it. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's what made... This album sticks out to Chili Peppers fans as one that, like, I feel it gets forgotten oh, because absolutely. it's sandwiched in between, you know, Mother's Milk, uh, Blood Sugar, Sugar Sex Magic. Magic, this, and then Californication. Yeah. So it's like massive Grammys, hits, amazing albums sandwiched in between this. Ugly steps. This one that kind of gets forgotten. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, this album, though, uh, even though it wasn't as well received, it went double platinum. Still a great album. I mean, and, and that's the thing. You look at the sing- singles from it. Uh, My, My friends, friends and uh, aeroplane, aeroplane yeah. and then uh, warped. Yep, they're still great songs. I mean, I still think of aeroplane as one of my favorite Chili Pepper songs. It's just so Dude. catchy and it's, yeah. it's great. And Dave still puts down bitching guitar solos all throughout this. And yep. you can never ever discount the Chili Peppers to have just badass rhythms. No, and so they still have that going. But it's no so. But it's something different. Yeah. And that's what, like, Dave brought in a lot of this, like, psychedelic kind of 60s, 70s inspired rock yep. that, like, the Chili's didn't have. I would, I always describe the Chili's sound as punk funk. Yep. Because they're kind of that rock and roll punk, but it's that funk bass yeah. where, you know, Chad and Flea are just grooving, grooving, grooving. Yeah. And this album has that in a few songs, like Coffee Shop, yep. um, parts of uh, the One Mob. What is that? Oh. One, whatever. But there's like there's some really funky riffs where you're like, okay, this is this is all a mother's milk. This is classic yep, chili peppers. Yep. But then you, all of a sudden you get some of these songs where it's like this trance is happening. And yeah. the the actors are just kind of like, or the actors, the, the musicians are just kind of like talking and they have yep. a lot of voice effects and yes. a lot of weird things where you're like, this is good. Yeah. But this isn't what I come to expect. Yeah. You know, you know it, it's kind of funny. I, it might be, it's either Warped or maybe Deep Kick. And it, it almost kind of mm-hmm. has this, it, maybe it's a little far-fetched, but a Foo Fighters feel where it's just very rocky and then you just have these beautiful melodic kind of parts over it too and then back into just yeah, just going hard for a little bit. Right. And it, it does throw you off when it's mixed in with a few of those songs that have the classic Chili Pepper feel where it is bass, rhythm, just fully just back there like i'm the king of this and exactly anthony you just scat up there we don't you're right. mess up the word anyways just do something and and so it's weird when also you know you kind of have these songs and then all of a sudden you have or you have something like you said where it is this this trance right um and oh, what song is it there's one of them oh, i can't remember but it is just kind of not slow but it's definitely just kind of like a this is weird. Almost Dude. like a, uh, oh, it's one of their uh, songs off Stadium Arcadium. I can't remember oh, man. It off the top of my head. I've never heard of that album. Is that a good one? I, I don't know. I, I... Yeah. Um, Dude, well, that's one thing that is good to mention. Like, you mentioned Anthony scatting. Like, this album, I think, has a lot less rap absolutely Absolutely. anthony rapping it's a lot of him singing and talking and yeah getting through stuff and some of that different sound was like my favorite song on this album after listening through it a few times is walkabout yeah and it is different than what you'd normally think but it's just like random like you know it's music but it doesn't seem like there was a lot to it like it's felt effortless for them yep and so like you know anthony's just like I was hopping the fence and I saw a blade of grass, so I mowed it because I was walking on the walkabout. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's just like he goes through like fifteen different things, and yeah. there might be deeper things there because yeah. a lot of the lyrics in this album seem to be quite a bit darker than maybe some of the other albums. I was going to say that too. But songs like Walkabout and some of those maybe more kind of Navarro-inspired songs 
are still good. Still great. And like it shows the versat versatility that these other musicians can just kind of get in a groove and do their thing. Yeah. Well, and it, it, it's funny that because when I when we said we we're gonna do this, I I listened to the album twice, and I was kind of like. I, I didn't like it. I was just kind of like, dude, I'm gonna go in and be very critical of it. <laughs> yeah. As, and as a huge Chili Pepper fan, I've seen them live. I read Anthony's book, Flea's book, love them. I mean, there's a point where if you hit shuffle my iPod, every third song is gonna be a Chili Pepper <laughs> yeah. song. And then over the last two days, I've listened to it, and it kind of reminds me when I saw them live. Uh -huh. They, they have you know the song Weird Like, yep. Like Me, Weird Like Me, yeah. And, exactly, yeah. and, and like I myself, I was kind of like, yeah, it's a fun song. It's a fun song to sing about. But I would never go and willingly turn that song on. I was just like, no, I don't really care for it. <laughs> yeah. But when I saw them live, Anthony yells, I want to see some shirts in the air. And sure. I'm over the pit. And all of a sudden, I look down, it is just thousands of shirtless <laughs> dudes, just yeah. shirts, just boom, boom. And I was like, I get this song. This yeah. song is great. And and this is kind of remind me of that. I listened to the last couple of days and I was like, I get this. And this is that song. This is an album where you could take off your shirt and spin it almost the entire way through. And yeah. I was like, well, yeah, like, yeah. you know, nobody weird like me. I mean, for me as a drummer, I love that song. Yeah. The Mother's Milk album, I think, is my favorite album. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, and that song is just very fast paced. It's weird. It's interesting. It's yep, like yep. a lot's happening. Yeah. Um, dude, it, yeah, I, I love that song. Um, but yeah, like you said, it speaks to versatility in this band. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If I had to ask, if you had to name your three favorite songs off of it, off of this album, al this album besides the singles. Oh, or well, at least at least maybe your top one or two. I know walk, you walk about, about walk about, and maybe that might have been a single later. I, I don't know, but of the three original that came out before the album was released, yeah, it was warped. My friends and aeroplane. Yeah. So I would say walkabout, and probably coffee shop. Really, dude. Coffee shop is just classic. Yeah. Funky. Oh, it like is, it I want to. As soon as I heard that song, I was driving on my way to work listening to these. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I want to play drums. <laughs> yeah. Like that song is just speaks to me. Like the Chili Peppers have this way where, and Chad's drumming especially, where they just play music. Yeah. That starts with groove first. Yeah. So you naturally you're like bobbing your head. Yeah. You just you can't help it. Yep. And it speaks to that like uniqueness of being human. Yeah. Where like music is such a weird thing where all humans kind of interact well with yep. music. We like music. No other species is like that. Yeah. And the Chili Peppers find a way, even on this album that a lot of people write off yeah. to just make you dance. Well, and, and I loved it. it it's funny because it, it's summed up really well in, 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 in another song, obviously, in Can't Stop, when Anthony goes, you know, music, you use two sticks to make it in the nature. Uh -huh. and, and that's what this is. They start off with the, the jam. They start off with just, if I can get Flea jumping up and down, I know I'm doing something. <laughs> you know right. we're going to have yeah, a good night. Exactly, yeah. And, and that is... Regardless of whether or not you are a fan of any guitarist or you don't like one album, you don't like one guitarist, you can't deny that the album is going to still make you. Exactly. Let's go! Well, because it still is Chili Peppers. I yeah. mean, it, you, those guys can't help but make hits. Yeah. Well, I feel like absolutely. they just can't help it. Yeah. And this album, I mean, like we were saying, the recording process took a couple of years. They yeah. took a break for 94 Woodstock. They took a break for... You know, different drug-related issues. Yeah. Dave ended up having drug issues after the... I mean, there was just a, a lot of issues. And so it was just this grueling process of making this album. Yeah. Which you hear about sometimes where, you know, maybe a, a band is under a gun to get an album done in a certain amount of time. Which, yep. it doesn't sound like that was the case here, but a lot of times you get an album put together that's a lot of pieces cut from different feelings, different times, yeah. and it doesn't feel cohesive at all. Yeah. And I got to admit... Knowing all the background, I'm surprised how well this album fits together. Yeah. No, it does. Like, no, it does. It could have been a shit show. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's honestly not as bad as I had heard or, you know, given it credit for from yeah. past listens. Yeah. No, I mean, it could have easily have gone from a a sad song that was very slow. It could have, and then straight to in just their thrashing about, and it doesn't. The songs. It, even though they still have both style songs in there, lots of styles of songs in there, yeah. they still at least order them in a way 
that it flows. And and like you had mentioned earlier, you can definitely tell that it's a darker album. Sure. And I, I think Dave Navarro's where they were at, Dave Navarro's guitar playing really complemented that. Dude, and, I agree. And because regardless of whether or not there are gonna be drug problems, or yeah, with the drug problems. And coming in, you're going to probably have some dark lyrics to Dude, talk about. Yeah, for sure. And then you have a guitarist who can come in and complement that very well. Yeah. And which made it just even better. It really added to it to uplift it into something. And, and that's one of the cool things as a guitarist is they will they don't play four chords. Yeah. They don't play your one, four, five, six. They, you know, they aren't sticking to regular guitar music theory chords right. where you hear on the radio of a pop song yeah they will throw in these weird diminished parts and you're just like oh we're yeah. getting funky oh right. we're getting weird and yeah. then right back into the song and dave still just comes in and, and adds to this dark spot that the band is in and still just absolutely kills it and delivers on the guitar dude i agree let's let's talk about some of the weirder songs because this this album does have some weird spots yeah one of them being uh flea's song yeah, p, p. <laughs> that song is so weird. I was I was actually listening to that in this room with some noise canceling headphones. Just I don't know, just zoning out, trying to really feel the music. Yeah. And that song came on, and I was really listening to the <laughs> lyrics, and I was like, man, they must have been like, they really needed to record a song. Yeah. <laughs> and uh -huh. Lee was like, I'll step up. <laughs> and I don't know what that album that song couldn't appear on any other album no I, no way no way in hell it could yeah sorry go ahead no that was pretty much it it's just a weird song like i don't know what else to say about it it's funny i have so i have two red hot chili pepper concerts on dvd and one of them they actually perform p yeah and it's really funny because in the studio version they don't really ever add any other distortion they don't add a whole lot of parts right. to it but when they play it live, Flea goes through and kind of does this whole thing. And at the very end, when they're yelling, what are they, so fucking much at the very end? Yeah. They, like, speed it up. And the whole band just comes in at this live version of it. Nice. And just, so fucking much. And it's just yeah. going to happen. And you're like, this is exciting. And that was my first introduction to that song. Yeah. And so when I went and was like, I'm going to get this. Like, this is awesome. And it never gets that. I was like, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, do you know yeah. but which you know always goes to say going to a concert is fantastic you yeah, see different to takes on songs yeah dude totally yeah another one of the weirder not weirder songs but different songs um tearjerker dude if you were gonna ask me one of my favorite songs on every side singles that was gonna be one of them dude yeah talk about it and it stems from me just being a huge normal I know. I mean, that's why I started playing guitar was Kurt Cobain. And so when I heard they have a song dedicated to it, and then, you know, I, I read know. Scar Tissue, Anthony Kiedis has a whole section on it of, you know, we we heard all of a sudden that, and the whole band was just mourning, basically. Right. Because you know, it hurt all of us. You just, you just felt this man so much. You just loved him, whether or not you had ever met him. And they went on tour with him. They yeah. had that opportunity to do that. And so, I mean, they really ought to know him. And then, you know, they come out with the song, and I I really love it. It is a completely different song from the yeah. Chili Peppers, though. But I absolutely love it, and they still include just parts that, if you don't know the song, still sound Chili Pepper. You know, when he goes, when I first met you, you were backstage wearing a dress. Yeah. And there are pictures of Kurt wearing dresses and performing in them. <laughs> so if you've seen those, you know that that's a true statement. Yeah. If you don't know that reference, and you're just a Chili Pepper fan... You've also have probably found pictures of, I know Flea and Anthony have cross-dressed before. Yeah, and sure. Fun. So you're like, this is still Chili Peppers. It's well, just I a mean, different sounding. Even on the surface, like, I feel like if, if, like, my wife listened to this song and I didn't tell her any of the backstory, yeah. she probably would think that he's just talking about, like, this lover that he had. Yeah, that, yeah. That passed away. Yeah. And that's, like, what's so great about this song. It has that duality where if you understand where he's coming from, yeah. it hits you in that. Yep. And if it doesn't, it hits you like any other love song. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, that song is powerful for sure. Well, it's it's fun, and I don't mean to go and bring other artists in, but one of my favorite quotes when I talk about music is, is by Dave Grohl. And he goes, you know, I can perform a song in front of 85,000 people, and they will sing it back to me and have 85,000 different meanings. And, and sure. that's what's really cool about the song is yeah. you can take it as a surface value song of, Oh, it's a love song. Sure. Or you can take it as the 
he's writing to Kurt. Yeah. I mean, there are so many different ways to interpret the song and how you feel about it. And I, I love songs Dude, that can do that. No, that's that's like the power of music. And that's what's cool about this album. I don't know that that John would have brought the same sensitivity that yeah. Dave was able to bring to yeah. songs like that. So I think it kind of worked out yep. uh, with the guitarist change. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, there's so many interesting things with this album in general. But um, overall, what do you? What's your gut feeling on this album? Where where would maybe you? You don't need to list your whole hierarchy, but generally, what do you think about this album now that we've listened to it a bunch over the last few weeks? I, like I said. Even from when I gave it the first listen through, because when I when we said let's do this, the only songs I had on there were the singles on my yeah. iPod, and I was like, oh, okay. Obviously, I know very little about this album, uh -huh. and so I listened to it twice, and I was like, I'm gonna be so critical when we walk in there, and then listening to it two more times. One was just last night playing some Xbox, and I'm sitting there, and I was like, you're grooving. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. I, I was. It was a good day. I was waiting on Madden, and I'm like. Hell I, yeah! I did the is, same thing. Yep, and, I was playing a, a video game, and I just saw myself really groove into it, and, and all the songs felt like second nature. Yep. I was like, dude, this album's good, man. Yeah, no, it is. I I like it. I have still a lot more respect for it than I previously did, which same. given I had very little knowledge on it, but I love it. And I'm with you. I'm very blood sugar, oh, you're sex with me? magic. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, I'm a very Mother's Milk, blood sugar, sex magic fan, and... Yeah. And so, although this didn't live up to those successes commercially, as a Chili Pepper fan, as a fan of music, it's still a great album. It's funny, like, everything you read about that album is like, oh, it just didn't live up to expectations. Yeah. It's like, it's it sold over 2 million copies. Yeah. And has like five hit singles. Yeah. And, I mean, anybody it's else that came out great. with that album, that could be their best album, the peak of their musical oh, career. Oh, Absolutely. And in the middle of the '90s, the Chili Peppers have a down couple of years, and they come out with this, and yeah, it turns out it's pretty good. Yeah, our cover band, the Blue Cold Pilly Peppers, <laughs> yes. can happily take that. You Obviously, know? <laughs> where we play every Pepper song like in opposite major or minor chords. I'm down. Yeah, we can easily do that, <laughs> dude. I love it. Um, yeah, no, great, great album, and. There's something I was going to tag off of that you said that I can't remember it now. Um, yeah, no, great album, and you can't be mad about it. And it, you know, you go on, I follow the Braille Chip Over subreddit, and you go on there, and people hate on it all the time. People hate on Dave. People hate on Josh. Sure. And there's no reason to. I mean, no. It's still a great album. Same. I, I, I feel the same about it, dude. I, I also came in with the expectation of, like, well, in my last, the last times that I've, like, listened to the majority of this album is... It's just like so so. Yeah. But I really hadn't heard a lot of it. Yep. I had only heard, like you said, kind of the handful of songs. Like Aeroplane is super catchy. Yep. Uh, you know some of those ones. But I found some songs I'm in love with. Like I'm, Coffee Shop is now yeah. like on my list. Walkabout yeah. is on my list to play, drums to, to have fun with, listen to in the car. So I think it was definitely worth listening, listening through it, and learning about the background too, made it a completely different listening experience. Yeah. You know, the fact that they were able to make this while firing on, like, half the cylinders, Yeah, I think she says a lot. Yeah. Well, dude, this has been one hot minute, man. Very one hot minute. This has that been one a, hot minute. That was a good reference. Wow. Yeah, well, I've been waiting all episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you want more album reviews like this, let us know what you want uh, in the comments below. Let us know what your favorite songs were from this album. Let us know whether you like this album, maybe where you'd rank it. And make sure to like this video. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Amazing. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that my cat walked in here like three times. I know. Next time on the Phantom Mayonnaise. There's a new sheriff in town. Doo -doo -doo.